welcome to black coffee gardener where i take you all through how i garden in my own backyard garden um basically through trial and error um i've only been gardening for about three years now but um learning a lot as things grow along and um just here to take you guys with me so let me show you something that i'm doing today so a part of learning in the garden is listening to spirit i had these uh buckets here on the grass and something said move them yesterday so i moved them and there were the most beautiful worms underneath this situation and i remember last year wanting to um start a project over on this side of the garden which i never got to but i'm going to show you guys today what i want to do over here i've dug out a hole as you can see um it's probably about eight inches deep maybe six to eight inches deep and what i'm going to do is drill holes all into the bottom and around the sides of this bucket only about an inch or so up. maybe you know maybe about two inches up i'm gonna drill huge holes in here i'm gonna fill the bottom of this with compost put the bucket in and fill this with um soil and then i'll pot something in here probably some pole beans or something i don't know but the reason for me doing this is to create a kitchen if you will for the worms um in this area what i'm going to actually be doing is creating an environment um that welcomes the worms as you know we love to have earthworms in our garden beds especially garden beds that have uh compacted soil um you, you kind of you want the uh the worms digging through the soil loosening it up aerating it so by creating an environment that welcomes more of them that gives them something to eat and gives them a reason to take it back you know to their colonies and so forth and so on underneath the ground um it's just a win-win situation for for all involved you got food for the worms you got great aeration for your soil and so yeah that's the reason why i'm going to be doing this um yeah so let me get started with that process and show you how i'm going to do it or how actually how i'm going to do the rest of it these are buckets that are, or this one here is a bucket that I used last year. So it already has some holes in it, but I want bigger holes because I want the worms to be able to get in and out of the holes freely. So I'm going to use the, um, the biggest screw or drill or drill bit. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm going to use the biggest one that I have in order to uh, make the holes that I want around the sides of the, um, the bucket and also along the bottom. As I'm starting to do this, I realize that uh, the drill needs to be charged and I'm so not in the mood <laughs> to put my project on, on a pause in order, to, um, in order to charge it. So let's see see what happens.
Now, as you can see, I've buried this bucket down into the ground. Now the holes are underneath there, the food is underneath there, whether the, the worms come in from the bottom and start eating away at that food as it decomposes or whether, whether they go straight in through the holes. Um, you know, however they get to it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that there's a space here in the garden that will constantly have something for them to eat. Um, very similar, like I said, to my composting in place. I'm sure there's a video, there is a video, I'm not sure. There's a video um, of how I did my composting in place last year, which I'll still do some of that this year. But I'm going to give this this a try. I, I really think... Um, this is going to be a great way to to bring more worms into into the garden. I'm actually going to put another one of those setups right here, but I'm not going to do it right now because um, I need to charge. I need to charge the um, spit it out the drill. So as long as the weather holds up, I'll come back and I'll do um, the other side and I'll show you guys that um or maybe i'll just put keep this video short and sweet and and put it up i mean you guys have seen how i did it um like i said very similar to the compost in, in place composting in place that i did last year but the composting in place was mainly for creating soil this is solely um for worms like it's I'm building a worm home if you will i called it a worm kitchen um because essentially what I want them to do, like I've probably said one too many times in this short video already, is that I just want them to have somewhere to eat. And, um, you know, I, I want the garden, as we all should want the, the garden to be um, a beautiful home for, for, for worms. So I'm going to get this uh, drill charged. And this tree, how do I turn this, this tree? Hello, beautiful. Yeah. Anyhow, I didn't do a video about any of this situation because I have tons of videos up from last season and the season before. And um, for those that watch my videos, you know my issues that I have with squirrels. That's why we have Mr. Owl up there who, <laughs> I don't know if he's working or not. I don't want to oh mr al anyhow but um just real quick i have some kale planted down here some onions some swiss chard is coming up the kale i transplanted from in the house the swiss chard i don't know if you if it'll show up in the video which is back there and some beets i planted those from seeds last week so those are um those are coming in nicely so two spinach transplants from inside the house and those back there are two uh bok choy transplants oh let's see over here we have more beets and some chamomile chamomile what did i do on this side brussels sprouts japanese mustard and in here is tot soy seeds and there's some seeds in there i just don't remember that oh dinosaur kale I'm fidgety. I finished what I wanted to do outside. Um, I have to be honest, I did not wait to charge the drill. I just powered through it and wound up putting the other um, worm kitchen set up on the other side. And now I'm like, I, I really should take a ride to the local nursery just to see what they have. They might, they might have something that... I think we should go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> I really don't need anything from this garden. For real. It's the reason why I started so many seeds inside um, is because buying transplants can 
get to be very expensive. You know, it's like going to the dollar store. And you're like, oh, well, it's only a dollar. It's only a dollar. And then you get to the register and it's, uh, you know, your total's $30. It's the same with transplants. You know, it's $3 here, $4 there. And, and you know, I get up front with my little wagon and I've spent $100. So anyhow, I say all that to say I started as many different varieties of, of vegetables as I did inside this year because I didn't want to spend as much money on transplants and I have the seeds um so yeah it just it just makes more sense but I don't know talk about working on instinct um I just had a feeling of hey let's go to the garden and see which it's a nursery but I call it a garden so um yeah let me go and see what, what they have and and more so just in um just flowers like I really just want um I want a few flowers that I can put in some of the pot I'm not I'm I like flowers I enjoy them they're beautiful and all those type of things but I've never actually grown them um and this may sound odd but it, you know it's like I don't know can do flowers do well in pots are they supposed to be in the ground you know different things like that and my thing is if I can't eat it then I, I'm not really interested in growing it um but I do know that this year I want more color in the garden so I don't know we're going and we're gonna see what type of flowers they have also there is, is a uh, horticulturist horticulturist I think I said it right the first time anyhow that works here she's always super helpful and I can never remember her name but anywho I'm hoping she's there today because my watermelon seed that I started inside which I just planted it just to see if if it would germinate because like I said I, I had such a hard time last year last year was a total fail I think I planted five or six different watermelon seeds and tried all these different methods to keep the soil warm and nothing was just working and um this year I finally got a watermelon seed to germinate and I'm super excited about it and I know it was very early because the plant is at the size now where I know that it wants to go outside but we're still having like 40 degree nights here you know days are know still hovering around 65 so I'm like I don't want I don't want to put it outside if it's not time you know and it's also this thing of like when you cultivate you know a plant from seed that's now your child so it's like well if you can't go outside yet then apparently I'm bringing a big ass pot full of dirt inside because I can't just let let it go now like you're you're my kid like you're like three months old at this point you know but anywho so I'm hoping that she's there so that I can ask her um her opinion on, on that um and also some mint mint uh germinates by cold stratification and that's just not something I'm interested in I did get one little little seed, one little peppermint plant to grow, and it's you know it's like the little plant that could or whatever. But I really really need some fresh peppermint. So if they have, um, which I'm sure they have all herbs. You know what? I am rambling. I just realized that, and there is no one in the car with me to to tell me that I'm rambling. I'm gonna pause this because I I think I'm rambling. <laughs>
I'm excited with my purchases. I'm so excited that I'm going to treat myself to Starbucks. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, I'm in the wrong lane then if I'm, if I'm going to Starbucks. That's how I'm feeling right now. I'm super excited. Um, I won't spoil it by talking to you all while I'm driving, but do I really want to take that drive out to Starbucks? Starbucks Grande uh, Hazelnut Latte with almond milk makes me happy. And I just did something that makes me happy, but doing that that made me happy made me happy for Starbucks. I don't know if that makes sense. Doesn't matter. Um, you know what? No, I'm not gonna go. Because, um, it's a little bit of a drive and I can't really wanna, you know what? Get your Starbucks, girl. Get your Starbucks. You done came over here now. When you was supposed to go that way to go home, you all the way over here. Go on and get your Starbucks and relax. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just turn. Um, enjoy yourself. So yes, I'm not gonna um have the whole conversation now about what I got because I wanna actually show you guys and then talk you through it and all that kind of stuff um but yes i'm super excited and i am now on my way to starbucks all right guys so i found two nasturtium plants actually there's two in I think there's two inside this one but there's the other one here um which nasturtiums were already on my garden floor plan if you will um i know exactly where i'm putting these so those are going to get replanted today let me move this back a little bit i got some borage because it's good for um people make tea out of it but the reason that i got it is because it says that it um attracts a fly that eats aphids any of you that garden you know how aphids terrorize well at least i'll speak for myself in my garden uh aphids terrorize my kale so anything that's gonna help either deter the aphids or at least keep them away from my kale i'm all for it so that's why i picked up the barrage there's other uses for it. Um, I guess I Googled it while I was at the um, nursery. I've heard of it, but I've never worked with it. Never. Um, it, it has culinary and ornamental uses, but I've never, I've never used it. So I'm definitely going to be researching more into this particular herb. Um, I got mint because that's what I really wanted anyways. Like I said, I do have some growing in the house, but what I have growing in the house is... I mean, it's, it's nowhere near ready and I needed some now. So this is perfect because I can take off what I need and then also replant this. All right, that's the mint. Okay. This one here, oh, I got another mint plant. Yep, this one is mint julep, is it? Yeah, mint julep and peppermint. Um, this I like because, um, not that I can't dry all of them out, but this one in particular, I only grow this just to dry it all out for tea. So we got the, the peppermint too. All right, this is something new. Never saw it, never heard of it. Um, raspberry dressing it's called, and it's a leaf like, you can enjoy it like lettuce. Um, as far as medicinal purposes, I'm not sure, um, but Attractive bright leaves add tangy lemony flavor to salads and soups and other vegetable dishes. So, um, having oh, and it smells real. Let's just this leaf doesn't look 
so well anyways so I'm just gonna pick this one off because it didn't look as well on the end I'm gonna just tear the end off and just this is good this has a nice lemon mmm it's almost as if this were in your salad you wouldn't need any dressing this is very good it's again the, the raspberry dressing so we'll be growing that. All right, moving right along. This I got because I love different varieties of basils, different varieties of thyme. Um, and this thyme in particular is a spicy orange. Look at that. And it smells just like oranges. It smells like a spicy orange. So that's gonna be very interesting to grow and um, even more interesting to put in a dish, which I have no idea what I'm going to come up with to highlight this, but um, as you guys know, I do the cooking videos where I cook what I grow, so this should be um, this should be pretty interesting. Here we got Lobelia because um, this I know this is great for asthma, which I was diagnosed with years ago. But yeah, I'm not with medications and things like that, so I've pretty much just been taking care of it on my er own um, with herbal supplements, um, products that I get from mother sieves, teas, tinctures, and things like that. And I haven't really had any issues. And when I do, um, it's just a matter of putting some tincture, which the one tincture that I do use has lobelia in it. Um, so I, I thought it'd be interesting to grow it. And then I can also just um, take the leaves and steep them at night and you know have a cup of tea um, at night. But it also, look at this, grows these beautiful, beautiful purple flowers. Is that it? Yeah, I think you can see that. These beautiful purple flowers that are edible. So once again, if, um, if I can eat it, I'm going to grow it. And same with, with the nasturtiums. They're a beautiful, beautiful flower once they're in bloom. But the entire thing, the entire plant is edible. So I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for that. Um, and then having said that, last but not least, like I said, I wanted to add color to the garden and in a way that, you know, maybe isn't something that's necessarily edible. So there's a sign that said, not for um, in ground or, or, what did it say, not? Long story short, um, these particular plants were <clears throat> do better in containers than in the ground. So this is why I was super excited. We got Babe's favorite color. This purple is so beautiful. Oh, and these are called Super Bells. Holy smokes. Uh, same with this one, just different color. This one is called an Aloha Kona Dark Red. I don't know. Um, once again, I'm not a flower gardener, but this these two particular plants said I can grow them in containers, um, which is exactly what I need. I don't have any ground space. Like I just have this thing. I don't want to not waste ground space, but. I need my vegetables to be in ground space so I can always find a container um, you know to, 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 to put these in and um, so that's that's what I'm gonna do so thank you guys for coming along with me um, on my haul this has been a long day this video was just supposed to be about uh, my little situation over there but anyways it's all good Thank you. If, if you've stuck around this long, thank you. I really appreciate you. Um, thank you for watching Black Coffee Gardener. Um, I hope you learned something today. Take a little time each day to love on yourselves. And I will see you all. Well, by the next time I see you all, she will be gone. You know, cherry blossoms are so beautiful, but they just don't stay in bloom very long. I've got about a week to enjoy this. I mean, you can already see the, the leaves starting to take over. And yeah, she's already, she's already shedding her beautiful blooms. 
oh, I'm actually making a salad tomorrow with some of these blooms. Maybe I'll do a video about that. Anyways, all right, guys, uh, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.